The Maggie B by Irene Haas. This is a story of a wish come true. Margaret Barnstable wished on a star one night. North Star, star of the sea, I wish for a ship named after me to sail for a day alone and free with someone nice for company. And then she went off to bed. When she woke up, she was in the cabin of her own ship. It was named the Maggie B after her, and the nice company was her brother James, who was a dear baby. A rooster crowed on deck, so Margaret knew the day was about to begin. She took James out to welcome the sun. It warmed them up and brightened the sky. On the poop deck was a tiny farm. There were a goat and some chickens, an apple tree and a peach tree and an orange tree with a toucan perched on a branch. They picked an orange for breakfast. Since it was her own little cabin in her own little ship, Margaret worked hard and tidied it up with a joyful hustle bustle. All the sparkling morning while she scrubbed the deck and made the ship ready to sail, she sang an old sea shanty. Oh, the sailor's life is bold and free. His home is on the rolling sea. Yeave ho, my lads, come sail with me. The Maggie B was soon riding the tops of the waves like a bird. In the early afternoon, Margaret and James had a picnic lunch under the apple tree. What shall we have for supper tonight? Margaret wondered as soon as lunch was over. With a lovely idea in her mind, she gathered a basketful of delicious things from the farm. And out of the sea, she netted a blue-green lobster and a silvery sea bass. On her little stove, Margaret set a big pot of broth to bubble and boil. She chopped, chopped, chopped the vegetables and put them into the pot. And then in went the sweet smelling herbs, the gleaming, glistening fish and the knobby hard shell lobster. As she whipped off her apron, she closed her eyes and breathed in the smell of the good sea stew. All afternoon, it would simmer and fill the air with its fragrance. The Maggie B sailed steadily on. The breeze was gentle, warm, and soft. James had his nap on a velvet pillow, and Margaret painted a handsome portrait of him. After juice and cookie time, she gave James his counting lesson, and this is how she did it. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I let him go again. Why did you let him go? Because he bit my finger so. Which finger did he bite? The little one upon the right. And she gave James his little finger a nibble, which made him laugh and laugh until suddenly he stopped. The sun had disappeared. Margaret and James were cold. The sky grew darker. The goat and chickens fled into their little shelter. The toucan flew screeching into the cabin. James started to cry. <laughs> A storm was coming. Margaret must make the boat ready at once. She took in the sail and tied it tight. She dropped the anchor and stowed all the gear while rain drummed on the deck and thunder rumbled above her. Lightning split the sky. She ran into the cabin and slammed the door against the wet wind. Now everything was safe and secure. 
When she lit the lamps, the cabin was bright and warm. It was nearly supper time, so Margaret mixed up a batch of muffins and slid them into the oven. She sliced some peaches and put cinnamon and honey on top, and they went into the oven too. James was given a splashy bath in the sink. Margaret dried him in a big warm towel, and then supper was ready. Outside, the wind howled like a pack of hungry wolves. Rain lashed the window panes, but the sturdy little Maggie Bee kept her balance and only rocked the nicest little bit. Margaret and James ate the beautiful sea stew and dunked their muffins in the broth, which tasted of all the good things that had cooked in it. For dessert, they had the peaches with cinnamon and honey and glasses of warm goat's milk. Mmm. When supper was over, Margaret played old tunes on her fiddle. Then she rocked James in his cradle and sang him her favorite song. Sweet and low, sweet and low, wind of the western sea. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea. Over the rolling waters go, come from the dying moon and blow. Blow him again to me, well, my little one, well, my pretty one, sleeps. Margaret tucked in the baby's covers and took a last look out at the night. The storm was not an angry one anymore. Nice steady rain made a lullaby sound on the roof of the cabin. So Margaret got into her bunk. She blew out her lamp, curled up inside her nest of blankets, and fell asleep. The day on the Maggie B was over. The end.